when I when I'm shopping for my own clients, how I do it is well, the process is a little bit first figure out where people are sailing, what kind of boats that they need for their their, their budget and their expectations. And then the next step is getting them on a bunch of boats, narrowing it down to the two or three they like, and then when they're ready to buy myself or my staff of brokers, we go and inspect all the boats ourselves. Whether it's if it's if it's our listing, we know the boat. If it's some other company, we're gonna go and look at the boat. We're gonna say, okay, this well, I need it for Tortola tonight. I've got a client that wants to get a used Leopard 43. There's two Leopard 43s coming out of Charter for Moorings and there's another one that is out of charter. So I'm gonna be on all three boats. So I'll go to all three boats and I'll prepare them. And I'll put a retail number on all those boats. That one, because of its condition year, is worth about that. That one's worth about that. That one's worth about that. And then, you make offers on those boats. And you see which of the sellers is the most motivated. Because sometimes the boat that's not quite as nice as the one that's the nicer boat is a better deal because the seller is actually much more excited about selling the boat. You know? Sometimes you get owners that have beautiful owner boats and they're tied to their boat and they want to buy the sky price. And as nice as their boat is, it's still you know an overpriced boat. So I'm a big fan of making all like a lot of people think that they have to fly around to see all these boats. Okay? And I think a good yacht broker should save his clients from having to do that. Because what you do is you make an offer on a boat pending uh, an inspection, right? You know, we, we have Aussies that contact us and they say, oh, mate, you know, I, I couldn't possibly buy a boat, you know, until I see it and all that. And I say, okay, that's fine, but you could fly over here and that boat could be sold to somebody else. You could fly down to Grenada and look at that boat and learn that the seller is utterly intransigent and isn't going to move off their price, right? Because you don't know what a boat's going to sell for until you actually make an offer, right? You have no idea. You might get a seller that's like dug in. You might get a seller that's highly motivated. And so I do all my shopping at my computer. I'm on the phone, I'm talking to other brokers and I'm getting the boats inspected. That's just like really cute. But when you go to a used boat, you should bring your calculator, or what you should do is go on the boat and go down the list of, there's cosmetic issues, there's structural issues, and there's mechanical issues. And make a three-part list, okay? The structural issues are the most serious, and the only time I like to reject boats for clients is when I find a structural issue. Cracked bulkheads, um, you know, serious you know, problems, mass-based compression, things of that nature. Mechanical issues are pretty straightforward. You test everything on the boat, you find out what's working and what's not working, right? But the other thing that's really important to understand when you're buying a used boat is that if you go to a used boat that's seven years old and it has a seven-year-old radar, a seven-year-old water maker, and seven-year-old solar panels, and seven-year-old single side band radio, if you go through the survey and some of that stuff isn't working or inoperable, does that qualify? Does that mean that you as the buyer have a right to tell the seller that I want a brand new one? Absolutely not. I mean, I don't believe so. Because you're buying a used boat. So if, if a, somebody needs to replace a radar on a boat because it's inoperable, they can't get it fixed, I use a 7% a year depreciation number, okay? So they'll get a credit towards a new one. And by the way, in every five years in marine electronics, you as you all know, everything's changing, right? It's, what you do the survey for is to make sure there are no structural problems with the boat and to test all the mechanical systems of the boat, right? That's like really key. Um, but, so in my like pantheon of boats, the best boat to buy if you can afford it is the two to four year old boat that's never been chartered, that's nicely equipped and debuffed, okay? If you can afford it, that's a cool boat.